Out comedian, actor, writer, and radio personality, Keith Price is my guest host today. As they say, when the cat's away, the mice will play. This is The Focus Group. It's the savvy side of 9 to 5. Listen. Bueller. 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 Laugh. (laughs) And learn. Negotiation. This is what you do in business. This is The Focus Group with Tim Bennett. S-T-A-U-N-C-H. And John Nash. Keep your clothes looking neat and clean. We're all business. Except when we're not. Welcome to the Focus Group. John Nash here. It's Wednesday the 29th, and as I said, the cat's away, the mice will play. And that means Tim is not with me today, but I am very, very, very lucky and fortunate to have a good friend of ours from our old OutQ family join me on set as my co-host today. You love him. You know him. It's none other than... Mr. Keith Price. Hello. <laughs> Look, Hello, we even, darling. We even have a Chiron for Look you. At Comedian, that. actor, writer, and radio Your personality. Pro- and in the booth, we have Steve and Garrett. We Hi, have Garrett Audonio, and Garrett. we have Steve on video. Steve's going to switch it up. See how he does it with Look, Keith Price? Keith PriceComic.com. <gasps> wow. Or. Your tagline. Look at that. <laughs> these you guys, guys are so fancy here. Well, these guys, without this team, we don't go out to the magic of the world. We don't bring our magic to the world is That's the way I should right. say that. That's all right. Hey, focusgroupradio.com is the only URL you need to find out everything about me, Tim, the show, all our uh, media is there, including our Tuesday podcast, Unbutton. We want to thank everybody for uh, subscribing, liking, and downloading that. We're having a lot of fun with it, so you could check it out there. And if you want to talk to Keith, he's live here in studio. Do not hesitate to call 877-962-6846. Garrett will take your call. He's a very polite on the phone. <laughs> always extremely Garrett is always, polite. He is. <laughs> he was always polite. I remember back in the days. Do you, oh, serious. you remember Garrett? Yes. I remember we were Garrett. office mates for a while, yes. right? Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah, we kind of, like his show was ending. He Like last hour after a show, he'd be there. And as I came in, kind of yeah. thing. So the booths were catty corners. So OutQ was here, and Opie and Anthony were like down the hall. No, I wasn't with them. I was with uh, Jay Thomas. Oh, you were with Jay Thomas. He was up on the second floor with all of us in the corner. Where we <laughs> the the pit area. It was like you know there were folks. Well, put them over there. Channels. Yeah. Well, that's kind of <laughs> yeah. how they treat you. You're in the corner. Put them over there. But it was nice. We had a view, a window office, and everything. Mm-hmm. And they quickly moved us out of there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was great though. Just a moment. <laughs> so you know, uh, on our show, Garrett tends to relate more to Tim. Uh, maybe uh-huh. maybe relates not the best word, but he aligns. There we go. He oh, aligns okay. with him more. So he's your sworn enemy, is what I'm getting. <laughs> <laughs> so Keith, Look out for you. Keith, what have you been up to lately? Oh Let everybody my know. Gosh. Oh, my gosh. All right. Well, I have been slowly returning back to comedy and getting up and doing gigs again. And that's been a lot of fun because I've been very angry. <laughs> the, the world has been very angry. And then um, well, I've also just been... Just pause there for a oh, second. Yeah. Is that a requirement for, for great stand-up you, you or know for what? stand-up? I have to say... I was saying this earlier um, off mic that I have become that comedian that, you know, like, of course, you see me sitting here now with giving you zebra print, which looks fabulous on camera. It does, actually. <laughs> How you doing? It's very um, shiny. Isn't it? it shiny and perfect? This is going to be, these are like my new red carpet looks because I've been doing a lot of red carpet stuff. But I, I've been maintaining my podcast, which has, you know, finally I got it on Spotify a couple of months ago. And, and that's Keith Price's Curtain Call, curtain in case call. you don't know. Where's my Chiron? No, I'm just kidding. Where is my Chiron? <laughs> um, but I've been doing the, the, I've been working on my podcast. And then I've also been, you know, it, because as an entertainer, you know, you have to do lots of things in order to kind of maintain some sort of a lifestyle. So I've also been working as a tour guide. I've been doing tours downtown for City Ramblers, which has been fun. Walking tours are always a lot of fun because A, cardio and because <laughs> we do need and it's fun because you get to kind of create this whole experience for people and then do it again so it's like a really good it's acting a performance exercise. it's a total performance and so you get to fun. give it over and over and over and exactly. refine it and get it better and find things that are new which is really kind of fun for that and then i'm also doing retail 
part-time retail because you know we got to work yay and then um at the same time i'm i'm still trying to be consistently creative which is hard because those other elements are taking so much of my time that it's hard for me to sit down and write the things that i really want to write and so now i'm like fighting to try to be that 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 creative person that i've but the writing been. part the writing is like, like writing you just for have your to show sit, or writing just... for your show and also too because i've been trying to get into the blogging thing because the blogging stuff is where you can kind of churn out other ideas for your stage moments. You know, like you can get into the harshness of what you want to say with a blog, but then you can turn around and still, when you're on stage presenting the same material, you can talk about it and find a lighter place to make it work as a comedy piece as well. So it's kind of like a dual activity, just like, you know, talking about, I was I'm working on a piece right now about how I feel like toxic masculinity started with Mad Men, in our country, like once Mad Men became a popular piece of so Keith, how long? Stuff. Like I'm trying to remember how far because for me, uh, everything is yesterday. Yeah, but Mad Men was actually several years ago. Yeah, 2006, seven, whatever that was, and it kind of went and, and it then went they took it, a break and they finished up. But it, right. so it really was a chunk of time ago. It was a chunk of time ago, but I feel like it put a very strange kernel in the minds of. And I hate to say this because I know people will get upset, but of straight white men. Straight white men, for the longest time, have felt whatever they've been feeling, allegedly. And I feel like when Mad Men came back to to fruition, it gave them an idea of thinking about themselves differently. Or license, too. Or license to think of themselves differently. And that kind of, like, if you think about when that started and you watch the kind of parade of crazy that we've been living since then, it kind of makes sense. Just a little bit. It's sort of like The Handmaiden's Tale right now. Hello. I'll be curious to see if you put that out there, like if you're doing a blog post, what kind of feedback you'll get to that thesis, right? Because, I mean, it's a crazy idea, but I mean, I really, I've had an opportunity because we watch entertainment from different places doing what we do. And so I've been able to kind of look at it from beyond just the, oh my God, Don Draper is so hot. Which he is, <laughs> you know, come on now, hello, very famous. But at the same time, it didn't, there's a there's an undertone to that that people don't necessarily pick up right away and it kind of like stays with them. And I, I noticed that right away, like with the drinking and the smoking and the way that they talk to women, the way they talk to the black people, they talk to the Latinos, like the way that that lifestyle allowed them to be in charge. I feel like that's kind of what we're dealing with right now. But that's just... That's just a view. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, because I'm, I'm sitting saying. here in a zebra printed, you know, vest that's shiny. So who's going to really listen to me say that kind of stuff? But it, that's how what I feel sometimes. But now I have to find a way to say that and make people laugh. Cause so where are you going to end up? Like, where would you do stand up? Where like downtown? I would do stuff like I do work out sometimes at the duplex a lot on yep. the Wednesday nights. Yep. With that suddenly stand up with. It used to be our Poppy Kramer. And then I also try to, like, gig around. Like, it's it's a little harder for me because I'm just not into that being out till 2 a.m. in a nightclub. Is that what it really takes, yeah, though? There's, there's a lot more of that. I mean, and I, I kind of was able to circumvent a lot of that, but I'm going to have to kind of play a little of that that game now if I want to kind of be seen because, again, I'm I'm – I'm not your average comedian, and I'm not the same type that you expect. It's like, yes, I'm a big gay guy, and yes, I'm a black guy, and yes, I can bring all of that into a conversation, but I'm also Latino, so I have that essence to bring into a conversation, you know? It's like, I'm also human, so I have that well, to bring into as well. you could flip it all around and start with that one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that's backwards. not what people yeah. see right away. Go figure. They don't even think of you as human. They don't even think of you as I didn't all. even know you had Latino. Yeah, my parents were both from Honduras. My, I'm a first-generation American, actually. Wow. I want to be in America. So, you know, you've reconstituted yourself. Yeah. And and for for some for some of our listeners who may not know, we all shared airtime on OutQ, yeah. which was a Sirius XM satellite. We had a great time. Channel, and it was a unique group of people, and even more so, I think, a very unique group of listeners. Yes. Well, I mean, very loyal. I, they were very loyal. Very personable. Although a lot of y'all have not come to uh, Keith Price's curtain call. <laughs> do, you mean for, do you mean for the you podcast? Know, y'all could subscribe for a bitch. You know what I'm saying? Y'all loved it at me. <laughs> You know, but, you know, it's available on all kinds of outlets now, which is great. But here's the thing. You'd be surprised how many people don't know we still do what we do. 
That's true. I too. got an email the other day from someone who said, I found you on iHeartRadio. And I'm like, found us? Was I lost? <laughs> what, you know, what happened? I mean, I do feel lost now and then <laughs> in the current times. But um, I, And he said, I'm so glad I found you. And then his discovery journey continued. He found DNR. Mm-hmm. And they have a whole network of stuff. But now. he didn't know that because it's it's subscriber based the whole bit. So, you know, what's also interesting, too, I think, is that when we were allowed to exit. Should I say that's a better way of saying it? When we were allowed to exit, there was a lot of conversations about what you couldn't do after you left right away and so that kind of feeds into i wasn't aware you know what i mean yeah, like you, you, you know i see we were different we yeah, were well because you came in with money honey. We were, that's how y'all did it <laughs> let's let's be <laughs> let's be for came in with money honey, let's be for real for real we would, oh in fact we got that the, yeah. the undercurrent was oh the focus group guy oh well yeah you know but i appreciated it because i'm like i need to learn that game that's how i viewed it other people might have been shady I won't say who. <laughs> okay. Because that's, we are so different. But you as were, te- but see, the difference was we were a co produced show. Right. So we had, we were given studio mm-hmm. and, and so, like, assistant producer, yeah. producer, call screener, and airtime. But we bought for our clients and stuff like that. But if you, if we weren't doing that, we would have been an employee of Sirius. And when they, when they wrapped it up, they wrapped it up. And when, <laughs> but I'm shocked that you actually would have had some kind of constraint on what you were doing. Well, you know, you just you have a window of time of the things that you can and can't say when you leave. You know, when you sign that that um, severance agreement, <laughs> it's like there's certain things that you can't say, or they would have like asked for your money back, or you couldn't, like you know, when you're doing your next venture, your next venture, you had to be a, a, like a six month window of time between the time that you were doing it and advertising. So like, well, you that know, better be, that better have been a long severance package. Because... It was, you know, it wasn't awful. <laughs> Could have been longer. <laughs> yeah, and you also got health benefits? Uh, up until the end of those. Okay. And then it was dog-eat-dog dog world. And then welcome to the world of being an individual without yeah. a group and buying into a care. Mm-hmm. And now you're at your bronze or your silver level, and you still got to be able to cough up <laughs> six or seven thousand dollars in deductibles on top of the... <laughs> Sure. So this is, it's, it's been great. Let's just say it's been great. <laughs> now, right before we got on, you brought up something that I was intrigued by. You were yes. talking about former House of Representatives, uh, Representative Aaron Schock, Ugh. Republican Aaron Schock. I think he, guys, was Aaron Schock from, I want to say it was Ohio, Ohio or Illinois something like or something, right? Something, something Midwest and wholesome. Hot, hot guy. Illinois. 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 There you go. Thank you, Garrett. See, he's on the board. See, he's, Garrett, he's got I got you, baby. Wired. Um, He's the guy that had his office done like Downton Abbey in Washington. Everybody got like, what the hell's going on? You're, it was all deep red and framed pictures. Looking and, like a bordello. And, and then he was on the cover of Men's Health magazine at one point. Mm-hmm. You know, Looking for good and stuff. Six pack as Well, now he's apparently out, but not really. That's what you're talking about. Yeah, well, he's, he's out and about. <laughs> but I don't know if he's officially out. But like I just saw something on... Um, I think it was Kenneth at 212 or something. Yeah, 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 a blog. Yeah. yeah, and how he was showing the nude pictures of, of Aaron Schock. And there was conversation about him at one of the hotels just a couple of weeks ago, um, seemingly questioning and being somewhat inappropriate around people. Gay people. I don't know. My thing is, is that if he's walking the line as a gay man, if he's thinking about coming out of the closet, if he's not out of the closet, we have to just go ahead and own up the fact that he's hot. So he's already broken through the barrier of what he needs to do, at least to get through the gay hassle that's going to come to him. Because, oh, my God, you were blocking us. You just did this. But we'll forgive you because you're hot. And he's hot. And that's... Well, that was what we were talking about. But that's... Body. He, he's tight yeah. body. He's good looking. Mm-hmm. So he's already gotten the... Uh, the pass card. He's right? got the pass card. He's, he's going to walk into the gay community with the pass oh, card. Thank you, guys. Oh, look, see? Mm-hmm. How you doing, Aaron? Is that is that one of those Aaron Shock? It I says it's... that he's the one with the sunglasses yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God, Garrett, mm-hmm. you're right. Look how beautiful he is. Rocking the uh, facial mm-hmm. hair and a little leaner than he was in Congress. And see? I guess that's a constituent that's happy that the water <laughs> project went through or something. Oh, thank you, Representative Shock, for, uh, for that permit. Yeah. yeah. You see what I'm saying? So... 
<laughs> here he is, you know, and, and he will get a pass because yeah. he's good that, looking. Because of what Garrett put up there. That's right. He'll get a pass for that. Whereas all of the legislation and stuff that he, like, enacted that was anti-gay or, or he participated with that was anti-gay and not speaking up. Yeah. You know, what if what a disservice that he's going to do to us. So now he's just going to be another hot penis <laughs> in the gay community. And not as we don't have enough of those either. I don't know how everybody's like, I feel fatigued. Like summer, calendar summer is here. Right. So real summer starts June, 21st. I think, the, the equinox. Yeah. 20th or 21st. Yeah. Um, so we're in calendar summer, and I'm already fatigued because all the headlines are screaming about Roe v. Wade. Mm-hmm. All the stuff that's barreling towards the Supreme Court. Maps come up all the time showing all the states that are doing these horrific laws to chisel away at it. And it's all because of people like him and the license that seems to have been given to those in Washington. So I'm already like I'm already turning off the TV. Yeah. Because I know the only way to change this is voting, and that ain't happening till November. <laughs> exactly. So, but then the question becomes then, and I said this earlier, it's like, so what are we all waiting for to have happen at this point? Like, I mean, as a regular citizen, the only thing we really can do is technically vote. Well, so for those of us who have voted and for those of us who have enacted these people in Congress to do all of this work, that they're, st- you know, they're all standing around looking at each other going, should we, should we, I don't know, we could. I, don't, I mean, if we did, possibly, something could right? happen. But then let's look back and ask our constituents what they think. And I'm thinking to myself, don't look back at me yeah. because we put you there. Yeah. So you do your work. And then you come back to us with the results that we think we need to have. But. Who am I? again? I'm the guy in the zebra. <laughs> in the zebra print, You're matching the bow tie. The mice will play. Don't forget the matching bow tie. Now, 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 do my little cue thing. Oh, I forgot. Cue the segment. Which is what caught? Oh, oh, what caught your eye? What caught your eye? Here's what Tim I and John found. Up. <laughs> no, you did not. You're fine. You're guest hosting. You don't know how these things work. It's okay. Because I was prepared for this segment because I saw See, something. everybody likes when the fourth wall is broken. Is that what we call you, the fourth wall? You guys yeah. have been the fourth wall. But I love I'm, that. I'm happy with three, but now I'm glad there's four because <laughs> that means the building is more stable. Exactly. So what caught my eye is something frivolous, completely different than that very serious topic we were just on. Yes. And do you, does everybody remember the uh, I'm a Mac? Hello, I'm a Mac. I'm a PC ads. Yes. It's uh, Justin Long was always Mac, and John Hodgman, who I think was on The Daily Show, uh, was always PC. Right. So recently, John, Justin Long said that uh, Steve Jobs rejected many of the I'm a Mac ads because they were too funny. Now, when was the last time someone told you, no, don't run that. It's way too funny. People are going to laugh too hard. But the reason is very strange. So uh, Justin Long said um, he shot 300 ads, 66 of them made it to the air. And he said he began to notice that some of the funniest ones would never air. Apparently, the reasoning behind this was that Steve Jobs, quote, preferred when the ads weren't super funny because then it would detract from the point of the commercial. Now, see, I was confused by this because the point of the commercial is to make you laugh, I would think, right? Huh. Um, but it was to sell Apple products okay. and not create entertaining comedy routines. Um, so I would have liked to have seen the ones they cut. But I did pick two that I found on YouTube. There's a there's 66 to go through. I found two. <laughs> so let's see. Steve's going to queue Hello, up. I'm a Mac. And I'm a PC. You know, I actually just finished a, a home movie. That's so funny. I just finished my own home movie. I, I did it on iMovie. It was really easy. Well, I doubt it's as excellent as mine, but I'd be happy to take a look. Yeah, that would be great. Okay. Roll it. Hi, so. I'm a Mac home movie. Home movie. That looks really professional, right? Well, great. Bye. Wait, 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 wait. wait. What? What, what about yours? Can we see yours? Uh, please. Well, okay, sure. What's up? <laughs> PC home movie. <laughs> Work in progress. So I kind of picked that one because we're <laughs> close to Pride Month. And does it ever fail when you put a guy in a dress and a wig and they don't even try to look like a woman? I mean, that that's the works. part of that one that but just that's walked down with that. And we have one other ad, I think, Steve. Hello, I'm a Mac. And I'm a PC. What are you going in for a checkup? Well, I'm upgrading to Vista today, which cool. is great, but I get a little nervous when they mess around with my insides. Well, what do you mean? Is it just straightforward? Not really. Like a lot of PCs, I have to update my graphics card, my memory. If I want the premium package, I need a faster processor. It's major surgery. I'm sorry about that. Listen, Mac, if I don't come back, I want you to have my peripherals. Oh, come on. PC, you're not good. Oh, speaking of peripherals, 
See, now, uh, I've watched that a couple times. And that last line, what do you guys make of that speaking of peripherals thing at the end? I'm thinking his butt's hanging out of his hospital gown. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Garrett, thank you. Thank you. You nailed it. I have to I'll have to watch that again to make sure. But you're absolutely right, because it's the turnaround. He walks off, speaking of peripherals. OK. All right. Even though he tried not to look, he was forced. <laughs> he couldn't help but see from the side. <laughs> so yeah, you remember those ads? I do remember those ads. And imagine being, uh, as an advertising guy, I can't imagine a client saying to me, oh boy, these were really, these 66 were going to air, but these others were too funny. They're just too damn funny. <laughs> like, <laughs> like does, who I, says that, right? I wonder because I think in the end, like you said, it was about not taking away from the product. Correct. But, but the bottom line is when you remember the product, you will remember the product because of a laugh of a really commercial. funny commercial. I mean, that or a sassy theme song, because I still to this day love me some Anjali. I can bring home the bacon, fry it up in a pan, and never let you forget you're the man, because I'm a woman. Anjali, come on, don't you remember that? I, how could I not right oh now? Oh, my the God. Whole, the whole ad is living in front of me. <laughs> in all of its zebra glory. Don't oh, my remember? God. Yes, the minute what? you sang it, I'm like. I mean. Again, Anjali. I don't see, I remember perfume. things for weird reasons. Like, you know, you probably remember looks like a pump, feels like a sneaker. <laughs> and the nuns are playing basketball in high heels because they're supposed to be really comfortable shoes. Now, there's <laughs> nothing sexy like what you just pulled off. None, with, none in the <laughs> shoes. Playing basketball. Oh the, the, the heels would make these noises on the right? court. He, 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 looks like a pump, feels like a sneaker. Why would I remember that and not that glorious, like. You know what I mean? Or Dr. Pepper, the Dr. Pepper commercials from the 70s. I with... drink Dr. Pepper because I'm proud. Oh. I'm part of an original crowd. Um, and if you look around, around each day, day, I'm sure you'll find. Well, and if you look around each day, there seems to be a Dr. Pepper craze. Oh, oh yeah, I'm. <laughs> See, again, or the sugar free Dr. Pepper commercial. People don't remember that one. I, well, no, I didn't even know there was a sugar free Dr. Pepper. <gasps> With the blue can and the, the dark blue label. <gasps> sugar free Dr. Pepper tastes fattening, but, but it's, it's not. not. How, How can, can anything sugar taste taste sugarful? How the great taste this one's got? Sugar free me? Dr. You know, like, Pepper tastes it, fattening, but it's not. Yeah, that's the tack, but it's like, how can it have so? How can it taste? Have so many calories, taste like such a lot. How so few calories, taste like such a lot. Sugar-free Dr. Pepper, tastes fattening, but it's not. And folks, the Boom. show the show is officially off the rails. <laughs> I believe we've gone through a roundhouse into a different track. All right, but that's all but, right. You know, we're going to try to keep it on we'll track bring it back. Because we've got a, Keith, by the way, Keith in our second half is going to go over a huge amount of stuff to see and do in New York in June. But before Ooh. that, we have a business birthday. Everyone does celebrity birthday greetings. But the Focus Group is the only show in the universe that celebrates business birthdays. So I'm not Tim. <laughs> if you haven't guessed this already, and Tim does a darn good job with business birthdays. Neither am I. <laughs> so I'm on the phone with Tim the other day. I talk to him every day. Uh -huh. And he's, get, he's in Boston, by the way, giving a speech Hi, for Tim. a friend of ours who's retiring. And it was a, you no, know, you can't have to do this day. So... Mm -hmm. He said, hey, are you going to do a business birthday? I said, well, you know, it's the show. I should really do the business birthday. He said, well, I'll help you out. Mm -hmm. So I get a text message, and it just said, Carl Henrik Svonberg, Volvo, there's your business birthday, done. <laughs> well, you know, guys, Tim does a lot more than just look up a name. He does a whole, whole big thing. thing. So, I, I, all right, so we're going to go ahead. So today is the 67th birthday of Carl Henrik Svonberg, who is the current chairman of Volvo. Hmm. Is now, that a current picture? That is a current picture. Not bad for 67. I was going to say, right? yeah, how you doing? He's holding it up. He's doing his thing. Mm -hmm. that, that's money, though. <laughs> so before, yeah. Girl. All right. Girl. I feel like Girl. it's, it's turning out, out cue. Exactly. So before he was chairman of Volvo, he was the CEO of Ericsson, telecom company Ericsson. Um, and he was also on the board of several different companies, notably, and I think, I, I don't know, I think Tim would have done exactly what I'm about to do. So he was apparently on the board of BP during the time of the Deepwater Horizon spill in the Gulf of Mexico, yeah, right? I do remember. He met with President Barack Obama to discuss BP's responsibility for the effects of the Deepwater Horizon spill. 
He caused a PR uproar by afterwards expressing BP's concern for the common people along the Gulf Coast of the United States whose livelihood is threatened by the oil spill by saying, in quotes, we care about the small people. <laughs> So what happened was he was drawing upon a Swedish phrase. I'm going to, you know, if Tim were here, he'd tell me not to do this, right? <laughs> Den lila maniskan. Mm -hmm. Somebody in the audience, I'll, you could write and correct me. I'm not going to pay too much attention because I just butchered that. Right. But the correct translation of the Swedish phrase would have been the common person. So when he's giving his press conference and they're translating and he says, din lila munch, whatever, and everybody's like, oh, he, he cares about the little people. Or the, but in fact, he cared about the common man. That's what it really meant. That's what it sounded like to me. I mean, I wouldn't have gotten that, been out of shape considering that he's German. So like, you know. Spunberg subsequently apologized for the term and attributed his unfortunate choice of words to a slip in translation. Exactly. Someone lost a job over this. Probably. <laughs> Probably. Someone lost a job Which over this. Which is so sad that you could lose a job for one word, but that's how it goes, yo. Now, the show is going to take another turn. All right. Where are we going? We are going to deep discount land. Ooh. And I, I love a bargain. And you love an opera glove? Of course. Check this out. Steve has this magic way of doing things. Okay, so this. So as most of you know, Deep Discount is a partner of ours here on the Focus Group. Go to focusgroupradio.com and click on the Deep Discount logo, which in fact is a shark. Arr! Now look, my arm will disappear because I'm wearing the green glove. See? Arr! It's time for the Deep Discount read, Keith. Welcome to the show! And you can tell me how pathetic my puppeteering and the voice is. Or are you word. just in shock? Uh, both. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know there was puppetry. Keith just, Keith just picked up his phone. He's I'm probably like, putting me, like, you know, I'm in the children's someone. ward of a hospital and they're doing a thing with deep discount and a puppet right now. <laughs> so Keith, I'm so glad you're here today to help with the read. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so, so that's the puppet. <laughs> Hey, it's a site-wide summer sale. All right. Own your passion. If I had to ask you, what would be, just off the top of your head, name a favorite movie. Oh, God. Ugh. Blazing Saddles. Is Blazing Saddles available at Deep Discount? I, Steve's going to probably plug it in and see for us. And but yeah, Young I could guarantee you that it is. Oh, well, two great movies by Mel Brooks. In fact, Blazing Saddles was just on AMC recently. Yeah, look, they have the Blu-ray, they have the DVD. See? And if you watch it on broadcast television, uh -huh. it it's not the same. <laughs> they cut out all <laughs> of it. Half the little stuff is left on the floor with these beeps and... Because, again, it was a different time. <laughs> and it could never be made again today. It could never be so made you, again. At a site-wide sale, Keith would do Blazing Saddles, which I think is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to not pick a movie because I have too many movies. Instead, our friends at Deep Discount have done a really cool thing. Are you a Blue Velvet fan? Oh, my David God. Lynch? David Lynch. Yeah, I remember I going know. to that movie in, in the 80s and going, do you? what the hell was that? That's what I remember walking out of. I have no idea what that was Dennis about. Hopper. Isabella, Isabella Rossellini, Kyle MacLachlan. Mm -hmm. Okay, so our friend Lauren at Deep Discount sent me uh, three or four copies of Blue Velvet, and we're going to give a couple away today. Oh, groovy. And it's from Criterion. So everybody, everybody who knows the show knows when we talk about Criterion, it's the gold standard of movies. They take it, they remaster it, they have all these great things, 4K resolution, alternate soundtrack, lost footage, Blue Velvet Revisited. Wow. <laughs> That was, was a crazy time. that Dean Stockwell? There's a candy-colored man they call the sand. <laughs> <laughs> I just, and then the woman just dancing for no reason. I mean, it was just a whole lot of stuff. And you know how the movie begins? He, uh, Kyle MacLachlan, I think, finds a severed ear. ear yeah. Yeah, 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 your memory's good. Okay, mm -hmm. so, listeners, we're going to give away a couple copies of Blue Velvet, and here's how it's going to work. Garrett is going to play a clue, an audio clue from a movie. If you know where this movie, if you know the name of the movie, simply send us your name and address to letters at focusgroupradio.com. And if you're one of the first two or three people that do this, you're going to win a, a Criterion Collection version of Blue Velvet. It's great. You're, this is great. So, But you have to get it correct. But you have to get it correct. Now, I didn't go too, too hard. Okay. Well, well you, you can't say anything either. Okay. I, I, I've well, done I guess it, Well, I'll get it. Uh, we'll see. We'll All see. Right. So Garrett's going to play the clue. 
Finally, the Volga Coleman in Florida, where Armand's home is. So actually, we don't know where we are until we hear our last name pronounced. Mm, yeah. It always throws people for a loop mm. when it's out of context, but you'd amaze the listeners. You'd be amazed. Listeners know this stuff like that. Oh, oh, okay. Do it one more time. Finally, the Volga Coleman in Florida, where Armand's home is. So actually, we don't know where we are until we hear our last name pronounced. If you know, I think Keith, I, got I think it. it clicked. If you know the name of the movie this came from, drop me a line at letters at focusgroupradio.com. And if you're one of the first couple people who do that, you are going to get your own copy of Blue Velvet, courtesy of Deep Discount and, of course, Criterion, the gold standard. I wonder, you know, I was feeling like I was going to do a bonus round. Mm -hmm. I was watching, uh, I was going to have Sharky do a line from a movie I just watched. <laughs> and then I thought better of it. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah. And you know what? Yeah. You know why that's a good decision? I just looked over to the booth and there's a smiles like, OK, yeah, pop it. Yeah. If there's a time. If there's a show to do it, this is the show. <laughs> All right. Bonus round. If you get and I'm going to do it in Sharky's voice. Right. So it goes like this. Arr, what we have here, you see, is a failure to communicate. So Sharky's a pirate, too, huh? Well, it's a pirate voice, but ah. the movie that line came from, I just was watching on TV. So, I um, think I know that one, too. Well, at letters at focusgroupradio.com, send away if you know the, the two titles. And uh, so recapping, mm -hmm. I just sprung it on Keith. I said, hey, choose a movie. I'm sure Deep Discount has it. He recommends Blazing Saddles or Young Frankenstein. It's a site-wide summer sale. And the new release is Blue Velvet. And we played a game. If you're on podcast, just rewind and listen to the clues again. <laughs> You'll have a chance to win. We're going to take a super quick break. But before that, Garrett. Thanks, Deep Discount. It's combined. Yeah, there's a, the whole, all the routines. It's, like, everything's like, sort of, it's my zebra thing that's throwing everybody off. You're mesmerized, aren't you? Look at it. It is hypnotic. Ugh. That's I, I think hypnotic is the word. All right, we're going to take a super quick break. When we return, uh, Keith is going to be going over some fantastic stuff to do in the city if you're here for World Pride. Um, and if you're just a citizen, citizen of the yeah. city or in the boroughs, come on in and see some of the stuff exactly. you're talking about. We'll be right back after this break. You're listening to The Focus Group with Tim and John. Learn more at focusgroupradio.com. Focus on the savvy side of 9 to 5 with The Focus Group. Try, really try. Listen, laugh, and learn with Tim and John. I never try anything. I just do it. Welcome back to The Focus Group. John Nash with guest host... Keith Price, Hello. out comedian, actor, writer, and radio personality, writ large. <laughs> so, Voila. so Keith, yes, while we were at break, mm -hmm. a bunch of people have chimed in with uh, with uh, cl uh, names of the clip. Okay, and they've done well. They've All done right. very well. So I'm just going to say to Bob and Rob and Billy and Dan and Larry. <laughs> Did they win? <laughs> There's a bunch of people that have. Excellent job, guys. I'm not going to release it. We're not going to say anything right now because, okay. you know, that's... Do they the, still have to wait? Well, we wait for a little bit, yeah. We always want to get as much in as possible, and then we'll... Then I think what we might do is if some people might get uh, copies of Blue Velvet and some people might get focus group socks because we found... Tim found a stash of socks. Hey... I love the socks. Without further ado, um, I set this up before we sure. went to break. So I'm going to say it this way. My husband, Bob, has a coworker who said to him the other day, you better get ready to flee town because the world gays are coming in. <laughs> Which I thought was great. The world gays. The world gays. The world gays. The world gays. But when I reached out to Keith and said, do you want to sit in with, uh, with me on the show? Um, and then I know that you are Mr. Broadway and show. I do enjoy. So you've put together a great list of, of stuff that people can see if they're in town. Broadway, off Broadway, and as the bonus round, cabaret as well, which I really highly recommend. So the first item on your list that I had on mine was called The Prom. Yes. So what? tell us about The Prom. The Prom is a seven-time Tony Award-nominated musical. Really? I, yeah, seven Tonys, including Best Actor, Two Best Actresses, um, Beth Level, Caitlin Kinnanen, K 
Caitlin Kinnanen, who's the little young ingenue, and Brooks Ashbanskis, who is one of the um, kind of veteran actors that's like, you know, everyone in Broadway knows who he is, but the rest of the world is now finding out who he is, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's a beautiful story about, you know, the two young girls who want to go to the prom together and all of the frivolity, the crazy people that don't want that to happen. And then there's these four actors who come from New York because they need a cause. (laughs) And they go, cause celebre! And they go to this small town in Indiana to help this young lesbian get her prom and it is just one of the most delightful one of the most um touching it's also one of the true kind of throwbacks to good musical comedy angie schwara i haven't forgotten about you angie girl miss angie has a number give him the zazz that's all i gotta say all right so in your critique, mm-hmm. um, how is the score and the music memorable? Fabulous. Memorable. Does it, it hits that bar of it hits that leave bar the of humming a tune. If you don't or walk out, I can tell you. If you don't walk out humming, give them the zazz, then you haven't seen a show. Then you need to lose your and gay card. And, that, and really, <laughs> and really, that's like the supporting uh, the featured actor character that she did not get nominated for. But that's another story. Um, I got a lot of those on that list. Christopher Sieber, I'm sorry they didn't get you either. Josh Lamon, fabulous. This, I'm just saying, these you are You know people. what? If Keith were given an acceptance speech at the Oscars, <laughs> the conductor would start doing his thing do the music right for now, me. Right? The and I'll be like, it's coming. still, I love them. No. All right, but so the prom. The prom. It is definitely high on the list if you're talking about coming to New York for World Gay Pride. Like, if you are gay and you if don't... If you're a world see, gay. If you're a world gay and you come to New York City and you don't try to see the prom while you're in New York, then what kind of gay are you? I'm just saying. <laughs> you can't be that gay. All right. You know, I have a friend of mine who is gay that doesn't want to see the prom, but he's got a whole other series of issues. <laughs> That's All the right. whole story. Next on our list here is Ain't Too Proud. Oh, Ain't Too Proud. Ain't Too I Proud. I see ads on TV for this, and it's the life and times of the temptations. Mm-hmm. Uh, another unique opportunity like Motown yep. to have an amazing African-American cast on stage and an ensemble. So you've seen this. I've seen this one. And how is it? I got to tell you, it is one of the most hopping, jumping, popping. <laughs> it's like everything that you would want in a musical bio something or another. And this is the thing. Um, who's it? Dominique Morisot wrote the book for the, the, the show. And it kind of follows along the lines of there's a documentary or a um, a movie doc movie docu drama called uh, the temptation story and it kind of follows that path of that story okay and it is high drama honey they give you all the ups and downs as well as the most insane amount of talent on that stage i am telling you could i ask you a weird question maybe not so weird me. what do you think the average age of an actor is in Ain't, Ain't too, proud. too proud. Couldn't probably be anywhere between 25 and 30 to 33. But you really are narrowing of, that range. Well, because, I mean, th- I mean, don't get me wrong. Derek Baskins is a little bit out of the, the age range, and he's uh, the lead that got nominated for uh, lead actor. But he's he's older than a lot of the c- people in the cast. Like, there's a, at least a 10-year difference between him and the other folks. I mean, but those kids are, like, in their dancing, singing primes, just like the actual Which people. Which leads were. me to, to, to dovetail onto that point. Yeah. Is there a dancing, singing prime? Ooh, I think there is. I mean, I think as you get older, you slow down maybe a little bit. Like, you know, some of the great dancers of the world will tell you that they can't kick and carry on like that, but they still have their rhythm and they still have their essence. Um, but like in terms sheer of the, physical, but the sheer physical nature of the kind of dance that I saw in Ain't Too Proud, uh, Sergio Trujillo is the choreographer nominated for Tony. If, if they like that dancing, you can't, I was exhausted after the second or third number. So I kept, you know, and I'm just wow. watching. Wow. You know what I mean? I'm just sitting my big behind watching. So to see them carry on the way that those kids carry on on that stage, it's just, it was a mind blowing. I tell you, that would have been a fascinating casting to watch. Oh my gosh. Because I wonder, they probably had a range of super talented people yeah. and to narrow that down. And, you know, the, and the cast that they have in that cast right now, there's a young man, Jeremy Pope, who's nominated for featured actor in a musical. Jeremy Pope and Ephraim Sykes. And Jeremy Pope also is nominated for a play that's closed called the Choir, called Choir Boy. 
remember Choir Boy. Yeah. yeah, and he was in that play, and he got nominated for uh, lead actor in a play in that show. Some of these guys, some of these so, performers are so talented. They're doing it. And and what a prime time. All right, next up is a, a one I had never heard of called Hades Town. Hades Town. Hades Town is the. It's dark and grim. It's dark and grim. You know, <laughs> well, I mean, it takes place in hell. So there you go. The That's story really? of Persephone and and the they. It's like they've zhuzhed up the Greek telling of that story. The Greek and given, myth. And it is, I have not yet had a chance to see this, although I have met a lot of the, the folks like the choreographer, David Newman. And it's a musical. And it's a musical. And the woman, Why do I, you know, the minute I see this, I think to myself, the demon Barbara Fleet. Yes, Street. exactly. It's like Sweeney Todd exactly. Well, it's kind right? of that kind of, you know, it's heaven and hell. I mean, you know, the battle oh, between, I'm, you know. And, and um uh, David Newman, who's a choreographer, who's nominated, and uh, Andre De Shields nominated as well. I like that. I think the leads in that show. On, um, oh my God, I'm doing this off the top of my head because we couldn't print. What's well, amazing? You're doing off the yeah, top of um, your head. Uh, Mitchell. Oh my God, she's Andrea Gray. That's it, Gray, and um, Ava Noblezada, and uh, oh, Peter Patrick Page. Patrick Page, Peter Page, Patrick Page. Anyway, Mr. Page, you know who you are. Um, and he, th this cast, though, the show itself was, it started off in the um, lower portions of the, was it the theater, New York Theater Workshop area? Yep. And it was a, something that left, went to Toronto, had a whole so they worked it, worked it, worked it. Went to London, had a whole change, and then brought it from London here. What we're seeing now is a London cast. And Anais Mitchell, who wrote the book, music, and the lyrics for that show, she is... Like one of the few women that's ever been nominated for that particular, like has had that role as both the book writer as well as the music and lyrics. And oh, so, interesting. So she's know, she's kind, kind of a thing. Up. And like the first person to ever actually win the the Tony for music and lyrics as a woman was just recently with Cindy Lauper for Kinky Boots. That's the last time that's happened. That a woman has won for both. And I think first, last end. So you have not seen this, but you want to see I it. I want to see this. This is on my list of things to catch, to see. And it should be on the list of the world gays. Exactly. Because it's, <laughs> it's and again, for the world gays who love the theater, because we have to have that at Denim, that's going to be the show that probably is going to walk away with the most Tonys. Wow. So. Okay. Next up, we have Be More Chill. Be More Chill. Be More Chill so is... So I cannot even figure out what Be More Chill is from the poster, but I'm assuming it's about a teenager. It's, it's a teen-driven story. Um, it's based on a book. See, I, I have those in my notes. I didn't have his name number, but it was um, the music is by music and lyrics by a man named Joe Iconis, who has a whole downtown reputation. Everyone downtown knows him. He is like the musical genius of the downtown area. And so this having made the, the mark to get to Broadway now with Be More Chill is a huge, huge feat for him because he's got such a wonderful library of songs and music music that people are dying to sing <laughs> it's like in you know his what I mean? shows. In, in his shows and just in his cadre of things and it's great because he has another show that's going to be going off broadway this summer but it'll be later on after pride that they're going to start doing called the broadway bounty hunter with with you know annie golden from um orange is the new black yeah she's the the silent woman and yep. was, she's going to be the lead that's he wrote that show basically so what is her. what is be more chill about but be more chill is one of those teen stories about the kids who there's a, a music that they listen to with their headphones and it's what it creates for them the mood that they have and how they interact with each other it's kind of like so it's, it's like the earbuds go in, they're in their own world, their own and somehow world. that world is articulated on stage. stage. But it's just, it's a beautiful tale for kids to see, for the young. It's become a, a catch thing for a younger audience that, you know, zeitgeisty, rent, zeitgeist like um, a producer's kind sure. of thing. But I mean, but it's really designed for a younger audience. And it is one of those shows that before it actually came to Broadway, like the number of downloads on Spotify that it had gotten just like, on the music, just for the music alone was like into the millions. So in other words, it's, it's got a good book. It's got a good, it's got a good story. It didn't get a lot of love for the Tonys. Um, but I think it's going to be one of those stories that a lot of the Tony critics didn't love it, but the rest of the population liked will. it. And that'll kind of buoy it through the rest of the All season. Right. Now this next one, the last two, 
I'm curious to see what you say about it. Mm -hmm. So the first one's Pretty Woman, and of course that is based on the movie with Julia Roberts yep. and uh, Richard Gere. Richard Gere with Andy Carl and Samantha Barks. But is it literally the, like a re There's there You know, the thing is, in the age of the Me Too, everyone has to kind of temper these stories that involve the man saving the woman. <laughs> Yeah. You know, the hooker yeah. with the heart of gold. You know, they have to temper those stories. The hooker stories. with the heart of gold. You got to temper yeah. the stories a little bit. But Samantha Barks does a magnificent job in that role as, as Vivi, I believe her name yep. is, Vivian. And Andy Carl playing the Richard Gere role, phenomenal. I How old him. is the male lead, do you think? Andy Carl is probably 40. Oh, so they really are they casting kind of, They kind of cast kid. it close to he's the... He's a businessman. He's got yes. a career. More like the movie. And he plays it very... And those of you who know Andy Carl know that he's a big, giant goofball in general. And so watching him play this kind of like square character for me is fun, just because. And then, of course, the supporting cast, um, Eric Anderson, who I think got robbed this year from the Tonys because as a featured actor, he really does drive a lot of the movement for the story. Or Faye, my girl Orfe, she should have been nominated because, again, killer range, killer song. One song, you come out, you blow it out of the water. That's what people come to see. And so I feel like, and then of course she has a really great character as well. But I think that they, they suffered from the fact that they started back in August and they survived. <laughs> and they've survived. And then, and then all of these other shows that we've talked about are shows that dropped like within the last six weeks. So those shows got all the attention when it came time for nominations, and the show that's been open kind of got ignored. So wow, and the la and the last on this like movie to musical route is Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, yeah, I just saw that last night. Now, you know, Keith, I got to tell you, I, I called up this graphic, I the, and I love what they did. So if, mm -hmm. if you're not if you don't happen to be watching the video stream, you're listening to the audio. The, it says Beetlejuice, the musical, the musical, the musical. Because mm -hmm. remember the movie, you had to say his name three times, which I thought was really correct. Why do I? Th I thought to myself, did they do this? It, it seems so perfectly set up to be a stage play. Well, I mean, this this show that we're seeing now is the the second incarnation of the show because they had a run out of town in D.C. So I'm not crazy. You're there not there crazy. wasn't a Beetlejuice the musical. Yeah, okay. that was in D.C. And that's the show that they brought back to New York. After working on after it. After working on it and doing some interesting changes for things. I didn't get to see it in D.C., but I saw it last night. And I got to tell you. You saw it last night? I saw it last night. And that show is, you got to be ready for high energy. You have to be ready for it's it's a visual feast because they're doing things. I can like, imagine. They've got the sandworms. They've mm -hmm. got, you know these great things that they're doing. Or graphics, uh, the the songs. I, I have to be honest because I don't want to. Don't advertise, lie. Don't but, lie. But I'm going to tell you something. The singers, the actors, the performers that are in there, they're giving absolutely everything. Every vo vo vocal moment is genius. I just I didn't walk away the with, song with a song. That was the only thing. Everything else was fantastic, but that was the only thing about that show. I didn't get to walk away with a song. And I mean, there was, it's like, and I vaguely remember some of it, but nothing just like, you know how some things just kick you right in the throat. Yeah. That, yeah. It didn't do that for me. And I felt bad because I love. Firing on all else. cylinders. And it was just that, just it just kind of. Ooh, like oh, you know, but there was like the the numbers themselves are big and the the performances are huge. Alex Brightman playing Beetlejuice, shut the front door. And this young girl, Sophie Ann Caruso, okay, Sophia Ann Caruso, she, you when she opens her mouth, you're just like, what? <laughs> it's like what kind of voice is that? Amazing. Isn't Who it? does this? Alex Brightman, Carrie Butler, I love Carrie. So Butler. here's one for you. Um, my downstairs neighbor uptown where I live. Mm -hmm. um, he and his wife live below us. They have a beautiful new baby boy, but he is a musical director, and he has been working on a show for the last several months. He calls it a jukebox musical, mm -hmm. but he said it's constantly being worked. And they they take it. They took it to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. They came back with reams of notes, and now they're ripping some of the songs apart. And I said to him, "Is it really? Oh yeah, yeah." He goes to get it to the point of a memorable great book it goes through a lot yeah it has it's, to. it's time consuming it's not like it they, this, this it's sometimes months and years before these things hit the, the stage mm -hmm. right 
But it was. But again, though, like I said, do not sleep on Beetlejuice because it is a lot of fun. That's the thing. Oh, got it. All right. So, so visually, you're going to be like. Da, 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 da. Visually, it's going to it's going to get you. The songs are fun in the moment, but like I said, they didn't. St- a lot of them didn't stick with me because there's a lot of. Um, there's a lot of lyrics, I should say, that they use in the song. So it's it's very wordy. A pattern. It's not like Camelot. Oh, what do the simple folk do to help pick them up when they're blue? They sit around all day in a very ordinary way. And that's what simple folk do. That's a song from that's Camelot. Yes. Yeah, so, but it's like there's a lot of pattern in between those beats, though, in some of the songs. There's, I mean, I, God bless them because I couldn't, I, I don't know how how easy it is to memorize that kind of stuff because okay that's it's you know, think of how hard it is and then you're doing your I mean, line then you're hitting your mark then I mean, you're doing this then you're doing that and i mean and these guys this, the singing the dance it's 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 wonderful the characterization stuff is fabulous but there's a lot of moments in that movie too or in the show that kind of throw back to the movie like you know the shrunken headed yeah yeah thing you know you have a lot of that energy there too so I've, I like. I'm not poo pooing it. I don't want you to think I was poo pooing it. It's just that, like I said, I have to be honest about the songs because for someone like me, I I need a song too. A hook. But the whole yeah. thing is just Alex Timbers. Your direction, Mwah. fabulous. He didn't, get, he didn't get a nomination either, but that's another story. Yeah, those Emmys don't show anybody yeah. love. All right, mm-hmm. off Broadway, mm-hmm. uh, there are two shows. Um, one I know and I've heard from people. Uh, and if I'm thinking the right thing, the play that goes wrong. The play that goes wrong. It's been on for a while. Actually, that play transferred from Broadway after to Off Broadway. Back to Off Broadway only because there was a venue and it's such a need. It was one of those shows that honestly people it stayed to, it was at one point one of the longest running plays in New York. And the key thing here about this is this is a play. It's a play. So, you know, for those of you who, you know, we've been talking musicals right. and big stage productions. Sometimes people just want to go to a play, and, and I and I have a list of the Broadway ones. It's like I said, I couldn't use the printer, so I'm trying to like I'm slowly trying to be subtle and pull up the list. But like on Broadway right now, there are lots of really great names of people that are doing stuff. We have all my sons right now. It's um, oh gosh, the playwright's name just went out of my head. Wrote the Crucible, Arthur Miller. Um, wow. Okay. So all my sons with Annette Benning. Yes, and Tracy I, I Letts saw her profile then. Benjamin CBS Walker. This morning, yeah. Yeah. And so that there's a scene they revival. show her where she's like she's two sons, two military. Years. One goes off, I think, doesn't come home from mm-hmm. war, and it's like a one set it's moment. Like, yeah. Like it's a Victorian kind of farmhouse, and it looks like everybody's like vision of what Iowa or like whatever that would look like. And then it just gets destroyed. So a play that goes wrong play is a comedy. Wrong. It's comedy. It's a farcical comedy. You know, it's basically I've seen a, the ads. Up. Yeah, it's just a stage it's theater fun. thing where everybody, you know, this everything that could go wrong in a production goes wrong. You know what I mean? Like yeah. sets fall, pieces fall. But it's so much fun for everybody. That's another one. And this other one, which I think is brilliant, it's called Camp Morningwood. Camp Morningwood. Yeah. So before the show, I said to Keith that uh, John Waters did a summer camp. I don't know. It was it was either this year or last year, and everybody. It was like it was mm-hmm. vodka shots. It was like this crazy. Yeah. I thought this was his when I started to pay attention oh, to it. But you know, and no. it's a musical. A very naked musical. Oh, <laughs> really? There's nudity. There's there's after about 15 minutes in, the, the clothes come off. I've been told. I actually just did is a. This press kind of like naked boy singing. It's, it is a combination, as they said to me, of. A Rocky Horror Picture Show meets Naked Boys singing. <laughs> it's like you didn't you didn't well, respond. That's because I immediately when you said it's a combination and you said Rocky Horror, I automatically go to Frankenfurter, mm-hmm. Sweet Transvestite yes. from Transsexual Transylvania, yes. and in fact, my brain literally called up that video clip, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so how does that match with well, I mean, Naked Boys singing? Well, you know, it's it is a well, well, Rocky, a, I guess. The, yeah, well, there's a, a couple. A gay couple on their drive, they wind up ending up in a. Uh, they're like going through issues with their their relationship, so they're trying to figure out their relationship. You know what they're going to do? Setting up do. Exactly, exactly like Rocky Horror. Exactly. Set it up. exactly, and then they end up driving somewhere and getting lost and ending up at this nudist camp. And in the middle of the nudist camp, there's a lot camp of for, morning wood. 
Got it. All right. Boom. Now. And everyone, I actually, um, in, I guess, a week and a half, two weeks, I'll have a podcast where I've talked to everybody that was involved with the, the show. I had all of the actors. And to remind everybody again, that podcast is Keith Price's Curtain Call. It's my Chiron! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you? You got to be nice. You have to be nice to these guys. They, they push buttons. They can make things. You talk about the play that goes wrong. I know, exactly. You want to see a show that it's goes like wrong. the show that goes wrong. You. I mean, they, they, they bought the boop. I tell you, uh, Garrett and Steve are very patient. They put up with the puppet. They put up a lot of things. <laughs> So and then they tell you after the show, it was a great show. And then they'll say, especially the puppet part. Yeah, I put that up there. Some of your, some of your many famous faces. And right. Some of the controversial. Wrapping up because we're running out of time. Oh, no. not, not, we're okay. We're running out, but we're okay. It's All right. Balancing out. Good, good or bad. Cabaret. Cabaret. Keith has done everybody a huge favor by mentioning. I think it's three shows. Yes. Fifty four below. Yes, fifty four below. Laura. Einstein's 54 Below. Excuse Einstein's 54 Below. Laura Osnes mm -hmm. and Tony Yazbek. Yes. And they're doing songs by Gershwin and Moore. Yes. Now, if you've never been to Feinstein's 54 Have Below. You been? Yes. Okay. I saw Cheetah Rivera perform there. Yes. We were literally four rows from the stage. She's 80 something. She and came electric, out and baby. she put on one hell of It was fun. I mean, I can't. And she doesn't dance the way she probably would have years ago. She moves, but she's not. That, but you know mm -hmm. her voice. She and she has a presence, and she involved the whole band. And you know, I'm lighting up talking about it because I don't see? get to see a lot of shows or cabaret. But there's something magical about cabaret, which well, I'm see, glad you included. You're, you're what you're the classic example of what I try to explain to people. Why, if if you are a theater fan and you're coming to New York City and you're planning to do like theater runs and all that kind of stuff that you really should stop and see what's happening at Fine Science 54 Below or at the Green Room 42, which is another yep. space, and see who's there. Because if you're a real fan of, of the theater, you will find out that the, like, a lot of your favorite people are doing shows. Shows. Like, it's like Cheetah Rivera is somebody that she's actually doing a round of shows there right now, soon coming up, actually. Um, but like during the month of Pride, it's like this is like another example of something else that is different but yet still has that same kind yeah. of appeal. And if you like I said if you're a fan of the person that's performing, you're going to get to see them do stuff in a way that they want to do. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't have to be doing a script on Broadway or a I feel musical super thing. lucky that I saw Bobby Short at the Carlisle yep. before he retired and and then passed away. And then passed away. And it was actually a very close God yeah. bless him that he got to do what he loved all right the way the up end. until the, uh, the end. Marilyn May, oh, we, we've interviewed her on she's the show. The most, the she's absolute a most. Woman, but she's got a voice the size of a stadium. Well, <laughs> I love me some Marilyn May. But she holds a room. That's it. She captivates the audience. She she's intimate and her voice is beautiful. And I, what Keith and I are talking about her, uh, the Carlisle was where yeah. Bobby Short was, and Marilyn May. I saw it. Uh, she was in our studio. We also saw her fifty four mm -hmm. Einstein's fifty four below. What is uh, Green Room? The Green Room forty two is uh, one of the newer spaces that's in the Yotel Hotel. I know exactly what you're talking about. Right on what 40... a strange corner that it's is. It's an odd corner, forty second and like tenth. It's the exit of the Lincoln Tunnel, right. and, you... <laughs> and you're right there. Ba boom. <laughs> Cabaret by the tunnel. And the, I mean, yeah. and the Yotel is a place you sleep in a tube. It's kind of like the movie like, Sleeper small, with Woody it's, Allen. It's really small space. Wow, time, okay. But, but that cabaret room is the latest that has been available to performing artists, and they have really come to love that space because there's a State little bit of the difference. Art. State of the art. The food is fabulous. The cover doesn't usually fluctuate more than $25 per person. Um, it's just, and it is, it's a, a, another space to enjoy your favorite artists. If you are someone who's coming to New Have York. Have you been there? I've been there before. As a matter of fact, um, June 15th, I believe it is. I it was on my thing, but you'll go to her website. One of my favorite people is a woman named Vivian Reed, two-time Tony Award winning. Vi name, yeah. Vivian Reed, honey, she was nominated for Bubbling Brown Sugar. This is how far back she goes. Way back when. How old is she? Well, I don't think she wants me to give her age, but she's living. <laughs> Instead of none of my business, how old she you is. You are so she's living. You're courteous and you're kind. But she, <laughs> let me tell you something. You want to go see a performance of someone who has been in the business as well as the Marilyn Mays and the stuff of the world, sure. who is still kicking it and still giving you glamour on that stage. Honey, Miss Vivian Reed is. Agree fabulous. though that it's a rarefied crowd. 
It is. And that it's getting smaller. And I'm not sure who these new voices are that might come to fill, yeah, the, fill the gaps. Yeah. I, it's, it's a very interesting time, too, that w with... There's not a lot of singers like that. That's what, when you know we what interviewed mean? Marilyn May, she said that. She said that the world she came out of fostered and created and, and, and really just yeah. that talent. But now it's a, so competitive. You've got to fill the room. You have to guarantee if you receipts. you don't have enough or, followers on your Twitter, they don't want to hire you. If you don't have enough Facebook friends. And, or likes. Like, or likes. My, my favorite thing in the world is likes on Facebook. I like toothpaste. <laughs> I like potatoes. I like water. Does that mean I'm buying them every second? And you know, like, I, I, I... but I, I, I don't want to sleep on Miss Vivian Reed because I forgot the date. It's June fifteenth, I believe it is, at seven o'clock. And if not, go to VivianReed.com. Easy, easy, and okay. get that as well. And also, to another space that I've forgotten about too is the Cutting Room here in oh, New York City. Oh, Cutting Room. I was, I'm curious about that. So that's still up and running. That's still open. They've moved. I remember it used to be like on 25th yes. Street. It's now moved like further uptown, but it's like in the 30s somewhere in Murray, the Murray Hill area, kind of. And they, there's a wonderful young woman who's going to be performing. And I'm going to be interviewing her this week. Her name is Jessica Fontana, and Jessica Fontana is. You know, one of those, she's one of those people who I've come to get to know and just love. How and old is she? She is ingenue-ish. That's our big thing. Okay. She's probably late. Oh, I got to stop 30. this. I'm asking all these age questions. All like, up in her how business. How old is she? How old is she? all up in your business, Jessica. Anyway, but um, she's going to be doing a show at the Cutting Room on the 11th and I believe the 17th. Are you talking well. about like an hour Another, and 20 minutes hour set? Hour 20 maybe? minute set. And, That's a lot of work. And it's she's, she's one of those actresses like Laura Austin who we mentioned earlier. She's kind of in that same category of actresses that are, you know, soprano-like and they can sing and do all of these things and very ingenue-ish, like young and cute and pert and fabulous. And they can sing and do all of these wonderful things. And she's one of them. And it's really great because I got to meet her. And then it turns out her husband, y'all, is nominated for a Tony for Tootsie. Wow. Not that, not that that takes anything away from, from her as no. a talent, but it's kind of, it helped me get to meet him because <laughs> I met her first. Five stars. <laughs> that, like on Amazon, it's a five star five review. Star. I met the husband. I met the husband. All right, we got to wrap up. Oh. Let, our, let everybody know where they can find everything about the fabulous Keith well, Price. They can come to my website, keithpricecomic.com, or if they want to know more about the podcast, keithpricecurtaincall.com actually goes to the same place but that's because I've learned how to do that and <laughs> I've learned how to work that damn techno connecting stuff. URLs exactly it's baby very so modern you're gonna end up in the same spot very modern that's where you can go to find out more about that you can find out about the latest uh, podcasts I have a blog kpcurtaincall.com you can go there and see the list it's all connected to everything well a, a very very big thank you for sitting in today with me thank on the show um, me. everybody I hope you enjoyed uh, Mr. Keith Price you will be back yes now did you tell them what the winners with the, the quotes no, no that there? comes later <gasps> that comes later to, they oh. don't get to know until later but a lot of people guessed it correctly so all right big thank you to uh garrett and steve thanks guys, guys. welcome to calendar summer <laughs> you know i mean the calendar i'm like it's the fifth week of the, the fourth week of the fifth <laughs> month of the new year i'm tim makes bust my ass on this one a big thank you to deep discount thank you to them today for letting us give away copies of this week's release blue velvet on criterion collection and it's the site-wide sale so sharky says the puppet which you know people seem to love it or maybe they actually hate it you know I, what they'll get over it they'll go on with you will do you know what, what you, you are darn you. right about that if you? i want to do the puppet it's my show that's right anyway <laughs> thank you, you to deep discount as Tim likes to say, or he likes to sometimes not say it correctly, uh, don't text and drive, arrive alive. And see, we even created this little <laughs> graphic for him. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you in the new week. It's The Focus Group with Tim Bennett and John Nash. Accessible on all platforms. Subscribe, like, and rate us on your platform of choice. Learn more at focusgroupradio.com. That was a stunning focus group.